Descriptive Detail of Lucifer 11 Facts That You Need To Know The Book of Ezekiel contains a description of someone known as the King of Tyre. The description by the Bible of this person appears to go far beyond this human leader. Though in context, Ezekiel was first speaking about the historical king of Tyre, he seemingly moved into the dateless past with a description of the original fall of Satan. Ezekiel 28 verses 12 to 19, Amplified Bible. Son of man, take up a dirge funeral poem to be sung for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord of God, You had the full measure of perfection and the finishing touch of completeness, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the ruby, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the lapis lazuli, the turquoise, and the emerald and the gold. The workmanship of your settings and your sockets was in you. They were prepared on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers and protects, and I placed you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire, sparkling jewels. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created, until righteousness and evil were found in you. Through the abundance of your commerce, you were internally filled with lawlessness and violence, and you sinned. Therefore I have cast you out as a profane and unholy thing from the mountain of God, and I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was proud and arrogant because of your beauty. You destroyed your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I lay you before kings that they might look at you. You profaned your sanctuaries by the great quantity of your sins and the enormity of your guilt, by the unrighteousness of your trade. Therefore I have brought forth a fire from your midst. It has consumed you, and I have reduced you to ashes on the earth in the sight of all who look at you. All the peoples, nations who knew you are appalled at you. You have come to a horrible and terrifying end, and will forever cease to be. We can learn the following things about this angel. Number 1. Full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. This angel, along with everything else that God created, was flawless when it was first brought into existence by God. Not only that, but he gave off the impression of being especially beautiful. Number 2. Lived in Eden. It would appear that this Eden existed much earlier than the Garden of Eden that God cultivated on the surface of the earth. The Garden of Eden on earth could hardly be described as similar to what is described here. There is no mention of gold or precious stones in the biblical account of the Garden of Eden, and Ezekiel paints a picture of a place that resembles the New Jerusalem more closely than the Garden of Eden. Number 3. Anointed Cherub That Covered this could imply that this angel was superior to all of the other angels. Cherubim and seraphim appear to be the highest rank of heavenly beings, and being the anointed cherub denotes the highest rank among the cherubim. The phrase, that covered, reminds us that the cherubim overshadowed the Ark of the Covenant, a position next to the presence of God. The conclusion that can be drawn from considering all of these factors together is that this personage held the highest rank of any created being in the entire universe. Satan was one of those covering cherubim. Exodus 25 verse 20 Amplified Bible The cherubim shall have their wings spread upward, covering the mercy seat with their wings and facing each other. The faces of the cherubim are to be looking downward toward the mercy seat. Exodus 37 verse 9, Amplified Bible. The cherubim spread out their wings upward, covering and protecting the mercy seat with their wings, with their faces toward each other. The faces of the cherubim were looking downward toward the mercy seat.
The cherubim were responsible for protecting the holiness of God and carrying out His will. Ezekiel 1 verses 5 to 14, Amplified Bible. Within it, there were figures resembling four living beings, and this was their appearance. They had human form. Each one had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like a calf's hoof, and they sparkled and gleamed like shiny bronze. Under their wings on their four sides, they had human hands. As for the faces and wings of the four of them, their wings touched one another. Their faces did not turn when they moved. Each went straight forward. Regarding the form and appearance of their faces, they each had the face of a man in front, and each had the face of a lion on the right side, and the face of an ox on the left side. All four also had the face of an eagle at the back of their heads. Such were their faces. Their wings were stretched out upward, two wings of each one were touching another, the wings of the beings on either side of it, and the remaining two wings of each being were covering their bodies. And each went straight forward. Wherever the spirit was to go, they would go, without turning as they went. Among the living beings, there was something that looked like burning coals of fire, like torches moving back and forth among the living beings. The fire was bright, and lightning was flashing from the fire, and the living beings moved rapidly back and forth like flashes of lightning. Number four was in God's holy mountain. The statement here refers to the dwelling place of God, His visible glory. This angel was in the immediate presence of the Lord. Hebrews 12 verse 22 presents the idea of the mountain of God, Zion, as the representation of heaven. Hebrews 12 verse 22 Amplified Bible But you have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to myriads of angels in festive gathering. Number 5. Walks in the midst of stones of fire. The fire stones appear to indicate the proximity of God's throne. We read the following when Moses brought Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and seventy of the elders up to Mount Sinai to see God's presence. Exodus 24 verse 10, Amplified Bible. And they saw a manifestation of the God of Israel, and under his feet there appeared to be a pavement of sapphire, just as clear as the sky itself. Exodus 24 verse 17, Amplified Bible. In the sight of the Israelites, the appearance of the glory and brilliance of the Lord was like consuming fire on the top of the mountain. This could be the same as Ezekiel's description of the stones of fire. If this is the case, it indicates how close this angel was to God's throne. Number 6. Perfect in all his ways until his fall. Another point is driven home about how flawless this creature is. Before he made the decision to sin, he was perfect in every way. He was flawless, just like everything else that God had ever made. Number 7. He was lifted up with pride because of his beauty. Because of his incredible beauty, this being was lifted up with pride. The Word of God has much to say on the subject of pride. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. How much better it is to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding is to be chosen above silver. The highway of the upright turns away and departs from evil. He who guards his way protects his life, soul. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, verses 16 to 18. Number 8. His wisdom was corrupted because of his brightness. This person's great wisdom had now been tainted. It was obviously crazy to believe that the creature could somehow defeat the Creator. Number 9. He was thrown out of the mountain of God. This refers to either the angel's initial judgment or his future judgment, when he will be cast down to the earth in the midst of the great tribulation. In any case, his decision is certain. 
Number 10. His position was degraded when he sinned. This angel would no longer hold a high position. He will never be referred to as the anointed cherub or any other title he previously held. Number 11. He became an enemy of humanity. This angel has now been transformed into Satan, who is the adversary and the enemy of humanity. This passage seems to provide a description of the beginning of Satan's fall from his original position. We gain a lot of knowledge about this personage. He was the anointed cherub. Because of his special place and his incredible beauty, he was lifted up with pride. This caused him to rebel against God and to be judged for his sin. Satan became corrupted and iniquity was found in him. The Lord then lists three further sins, violence, arrogance, and irreverence. He violated the holy position in the sanctuaries of God where he ministered. Isaiah 14 verses 13 to 14. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the remote parts of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Because Satan made the decision to disobey, the Lord declared that he would expel him. According to this verse, as well as other passages in the Bible, we are aware that Satan committed sin. He was expelled from heaven and placed on earth. Luke 10 verse 18, Amplified Bible. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. We don't know when Satan was expelled from heaven. According to Isaiah 14 verse 17, when Satan fell, he turned the world into a wilderness. We do know that Satan fell from heaven and was cast out before the events of Genesis 3 when he tempted Adam and Eve in the garden. However, this earth is only a stopover for Satan. Satan has his kingdom while he is here on earth. According to 1 John 3 verse 10, the world has both children of God and children of the devil. Satan's goal is to ruin and destroy people's lives. He is a murderer, a thief, and a liar. John 10 verse 10 Amplified Bible The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. John 8 verse 44 Amplified Bible you are of your father the devil, and it is your will to practice the desires which are characteristic of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks what is natural to him, for he is a liar and the father of lies and half-truths. We could easily become discouraged if we only considered who Satan is and what he is capable of, but he is a condemned being. It's simply a matter of time. When Jesus died on the cross, he dismantled the devil's equipment. The word destroy in Hebrews 2 verse 14 is different from destroy in 1 John 3 verse 8. 1 John 3 verse 8, Amplified Bible. The one who practices sin, separating himself from God, and offending him by acts of disobedience, indifference, or rebellion, is of the devil, and takes his inner character and moral values from him, not God. For the devil has sinned and violated God's law from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Hebrews 2 verse 14 Amplified Bible Therefore, since these, his children, share in flesh and blood, the physical nature of mankind, he himself in a similar manner also shared in the same physical nature but without sin, so that through experiencing death, he might make powerless, ineffective, impotent, him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. In Hebrews 2, it means to put out of business, when Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day, he put the devil out of business. So, why is Satan still busy? 
Is it because he doesn't realize he has been put out of business? He's dead and doesn't know it. But God said, he shall be no more forever. Much about Satan we do not understand. He is now a condemned being who will be thrown into a lake of fire and brimstone one day. Until then, the Bible instructs believers to remain alert and vigilant. The enemy wishes for us to fall as he did, but we can stand because the Lord Jesus Christ has not only saved us, but he is also the only one who can keep us from falling.